There's nothing magical about compound exercises like the squat, and here's why. Welcome back, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here from Wolf Coaching, and today, straight from the trap house, we're discussing a very recent hot off the presses paper about single joint or isolation exercises versus multi-joint or compound exercises for muscle growth. You've heard it, I've heard it. Some people just think there's something magical about compound exercises like, ooh, the bench press, ooh, the squat. Like, yeah, they can be fine exercises, but is there actually any truth to that? Do you need to include multi-joint or compound exercises? Alternatively, do you need to include isolation exercises for muscle growth? This is where a recent meta-analysis by Avery and colleagues of seven studies comparing multi-joint or compound to single joint or isolation work comes in, with the effects being looked at on hypertrophy. This was a meta-analysis of seven studies that were volume equated. In other words, if one group did three sets of multi-joint work, the other group would do three sets of single joint work for the same muscle groups involved. What did they find? Well, essentially, there was no difference in growth. Whether you use multi-joint or single joint, aka compound or isolation work, didn't really seem to matter when it came to muscle hypertrophy. There is some good news here though. They also looked at combining compound and isolation exercises versus just doing compound exercises or just doing isolation exercises. And in short, again, whether you use a combination of compound and isolation, just compounds or just isolation, at least in this meta-analysis, didn't seem to play a big role or a role at all in fact. So if certain compound exercises just hurt you and you don't feel like doing compound exercises at all, or if you don't like doing single joint exercises, there's a good chance that for a lot of muscle groups, you're not really missing out on too much. With that being said, should we still include compound and isolation work in our programs? The answer is a resounding yes, in my opinion. First off, as I mentioned in my free weights versus machine video, there is a benefit to isolation exercises. A lot of compound exercises will have stabilizing muscle groups be involved quite heavily. For example, if all you do for your hamstrings is RDLs, your lower back might become overtrained or overreached long before your hamstrings get trained to their optimal extent. By including leg curls, aka an isolation exercise, you're able to train your hamstrings directly, get them up to an optimal training dose without overtraining your lower back even further. And so in certain cases, including some isolation work in your program can really round it out as far as development for certain muscle groups where otherwise stabilizing muscle groups can kind of just get too fatigued otherwise. Next, some muscle groups are between hard and impossible to train with just compound exercises. So from a physique perspective, if all you do is compound exercises, you'd have some pretty lagging areas that you could easily remedy just by including some isolation work. I'll give you an example. The short head of the hamstrings, the short head of the bicep femoris, does nothing but knee flexion. In other words, in order to train it, you pretty much don't have a choice but to do some sort of leg curl variation. Otherwise, it will not grow. If all you did was RDLs, sure, you would grow three heads of the hamstrings. But that last head, the short head of the bicep femoris, it wouldn't get any growth. And so it is pretty important to have some isolation work in there for those muscle groups that otherwise just don't get trained very well. Another reason to include isolation work within your program is because if you, all you do is compounds, some compounds just don't train muscle groups that well. For example, if all you do say are deadlifts, rows, some pull downs, some pull ups, your upper traps that are involved in elevation of the scapula may just never get that much stimulus. And so if you keep doing just compounds for years and years on end, eventually you may wind up having lagging traps as compared to if you just included some isolation work for your upper traps once a week, that would take care of a lot of it. Equally, and this is a bit more individual, certain movements and certain compound exercises seem to really target certain muscle groups for certain people, but not others. For example, when I squat, I mostly feel my quads. When I end a set, it's mostly because I feel as though my quads failed first. For certain people, one muscle group in a compound exercise can at least absolutely feel like it's failing first. Now it's difficult to say for sure whether that means that only that muscle group is getting an optimal stimulus, but it is possible. And so I would keep that in mind when selecting only compound exercises. I think that if you only feel one muscle group during a compound exercise, for example, your glutes during the squat, you may need to include some quad work in your program, some quad isolation work, like a leg extension, like a reverse Nordic curl, like a sissy squat, in order to maximally grow your quadriceps. Now that I've extolled the virtues of isolation work 
a lot. Let's talk about some of the benefits of compound exercises within your program. Because if all you did was just listen to what I just said, you could go away and say, well, I'm just gonna do isolation exercises only. It's gonna be great, no more joint pain. The issue there is the compound exercises are really time efficient. Isolation exercises, not so much. So if you're someone who doesn't have much time to train, I would say compound exercises are almost required in order to make your best progress. Compound exercises, a lot of them, like for example, the high bar squat, like the pull-up, they do a really good job of training multiple muscle groups at once for most people. The squat, for example, does a really good job of growing the quads, the adductors, the glutes. The pull-up does a really good job with the back, aka the lats, for example, the rear delts, the biceps. And so compound exercises are some of the most time efficient training you could possibly do in the gym. The final reason to include both isolation and compound work within your program is because as I've previously been talking about a lot, for optimizing muscle growth, we do want a variety of rep ranges within your program as opposed to just doing, for example, sets of five or sets of 10. Like that's a big red flag for me when I see a program. If a program only has three by 10, three by 10, three by 10, three by 10, or three by 12 on every exercise, that's usually not written by someone who knows what they're doing. Because we want a variety of rep ranges within the program and isolation exercises are suited to a variety of rep ranges, right? But compound exercises like the squat, are really only suited to relatively heavy rep ranges. If you go much above, say, 15 reps on the squat, for example, you will find that you get super out of breath before you get anywhere close to muscular failure. You might end the set because of the burn. You might end the set because of how out of breath out you are. But you may not end the set because of how close to failure you are with regards to your quads or your glutes. And thus, by doing super high reps on compound work, you may not be getting an optimal stimulus for muscle growth. And this is where isolation work comes in. Isolation work is a lot less systemically fatiguing than compound exercises. And so by including it, specifically for higher rep ranges, you're able to not only get some of the benefits I've spoken about before, but you're also able to get a wider variety of effective rep ranges within your program and thus get more muscle growth. That's the video. I hope you learned something today, breaking down the most recent hot off the presses meta-analysis on isolation work versus compound work. If you learned something, please comment, like, subscribe, maybe suggest a video. And I will see you guys, my supporters, in that next one. Peace. Bit of a dab there at the end for y'all.